Let me, I forgot something. Uh, drop the, the calendar down, if you will. And, uh... kidding around anymore. Ah. That was neat, wasn't it? Was it? I Remember liked in, that. The, uh, in the beach party movies when something like that would happen, they'd say, wasn't that? <laughs> nah. <laughs> uh, okay. I wonder if they'd be this way at nine in the morning. Sure they would. They, you are beloved. People love you. <laughs> they, they love you, and they respect you, and uh, you've changed the face of daytime television. Don't you think so? Uh, well, uh, I thank you for the nice words. I'll show you some mail, which may disprove the, uh, the nice <laughs> welcome you've offered me. Um, incidentally, the, uh, the calendars that are coming out under my corporate name... Uh, <laughs> Beginning for next year, we'd be happy to give you a, a score at half price. Oh, that's good. I'd, I'd be interested in that. Let me, you mentioned your, uh, 1967, the show went on the air. November, yes. Are we, so we're breathing down here uh, 20 years? Well, actually, we'll, we're, we're in our 18th year now, yeah. and uh, we've got a couple more to, we'll celebrate 20th year, good yeah. Lord, and NBC willing. Uh, we're looking forward to that. That's, that's an amazing statistic. Now, let me ask you about the calendar. I couldn't get off airplanes. I couldn't get on airplanes. <laughs> I couldn't go uh, shopping every time I turned a corner. Uh, when are you going to New York? Uh, how long is the calendar? Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, but I, and I was very pleased to see that uh, you were able to get... Uh, you were able to say something in your time slot, or you weren't able to say it. Dr. Westheimer had to. Now, this is very interesting. A couple of days ago, <laughs> Phil did a show. I came back from running. It was 9.03 in the morning. And Phil said, I think, the most provocative words I've ever heard on American television. Now, I can't say it here at 12.30 at night. You said it at 9.30, 9, not even 9.30, 9 in the morning. It had to do with urology, I think. It was urology. It was, <laughs> it was a breakthrough in surgery that required no incisions or no cutting in. You know. right. Uh, well, I'm not going to repeat it if uh, I work here now, too. Yeah. So, uh, but now, let me ask you about that. You're sitting there with a room full of how many women? About 250. 250 nicely dressed, well-educated, mm -hmm. intelligent Midwestern women. And you're talking about not only, not only did you have film, yeah. you, you had a device. You yeah. <laughs> well, this was equal time. You know, we've spent so much time talking about... Uh, women and anatomy, and I don't think there's any place we haven't, uh, we've had physicians from every area of the body on our program. <laughs> we have taped, we once taped the birth of a baby at home, and as you know, there are a number of women who are rebelling against what they perceive to be gynecology's treatment of pregnancy as a disease, so as you know, fathers are now accompanying mothers into the delivery room, and all this is, I think everybody's applauding that. Some have taken this to the extreme of saying, no more hospital for me, I'm having the baby at home. Sure. Much the concern of some doctors, one of whom gave me a bumper sticker last week that said, uh, home deliveries are for pizzas. Uh, <laughs> they're not crazy at all about this idea. But we were, we were in the apartment with one camera, and the husband was holding the woman by the, in the obstetric position, helping her breathe and count. Yeah. And their son, Ben, about four years old, is wandering around, climbing up on the bed, off the bed, eating candy bars. And the, and the water broke and the uh, contractions came more frequently. And, of course, we had only one camera. And the doctor was waiting there with his mm -hmm. gloves, rubber gloves. No intervention, no episiotomy. Just let God and nature take, uh, take its course. And as, as the, as the uh, dilation began, the camera panned down. And the woman was breathing very, very, very heavily. As you saw the dilation and the baby begin to present, Ben, the kid, leaned into the shot <laughs> and said, Mommy, it's up. Puppy. <laughs> um, oh, oh, boy. No, uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> so after uh, so many of these, uh, this is, that actually happened. After so many of these shows, we figured it was time 
We've seen uh, Aunt Harriet uh, more than she ever wanted us to, so we decided to bring in Uncle Harry, and that's what we did with yeah, the Yeah, you, you sure did. We got to see uh, Uncle Harry in, uh, we, inside and out, by the yes, way. Yes, we, we got did. To see <laughs> uh, it was uh, fiber optics was showing us what, what looked like just a drive through the Lincoln Tunnel, is what well, it looked like. Uh, it, uh, uh, for those who... Uh, for those who didn't see the show... Uh, it was amazing, by the way. It's called a transurethral resection, T-U-R for short, and uh, most men have to get it sooner or later. It's about the prostate, and it actually is surgery which, uh, w in which the entry is... Uh, is uh, Come on, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> well, it hurts me just to even discuss it, but uh, apparently all of us sooner or later, all of us males sooner or later are candidates for this surgery, and this is what we... <laughs> But you know, I was I was truly amazed that you and of course you've been at it a long time, but you were able to do this and pull it off. Uh, not only were you on television doing it, but in front of a room full of, of women you don't know. No, but sure. and you did it without making jokes or snickering or you know, none of that. Or, uh, do do you ever feel a, just a twinge of ooh, I wish I was at home reading or something? Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, those are the shows where I just walk around and hold the mic up and let, <laughs> let the audience uh, ask the question. Sure, I get uh, somewhat. There are lots of times I'm glad when the show is over. I don't know if you've ever had that feeling yourself. Oh, there. no. Oh, 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 no. That doesn't happen here. Um, welcome back to the program, folks. Phil Donahue is, of course, with us tonight. Thank you. In the, uh, in the middle of uh, when we first started the, the countdown calendar when we heard you were coming we started we had facts about you and your show to go along with it as we'd pull off a day we'd have a fact and we came across one uh, while you were in college you played uh, Biff in Death of a Salesman this is at Notre Dame right. now did you in those days entertain notions of uh, a more theatrical career I don't think so I never thought of myself as all the other that uh, uh, talented as a performer and also I, I felt that it would be more responsible for me to take advantage of this education that my parents paid for in, my, uh, in getting into a line of work that would yeah. be a little more reliable. Yeah. What was your first job out of college? Uh, actually, uh, as a summer replacement announcer yeah. at a television station in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. It was KYW, which is now in Philadelphia, was, used to be in Cleveland, and at that time I went and held my ear for the whole summer and yeah. said, KYW TV, Cleveland. Yeah, that's, that's invigorating work, isn't it? You, you sit there in a booth For and... 59 minutes. Yeah. And uh, it, you had seven seconds. Uh, it's eight o'clock, bull of a watch time, B-U-L-O-V-A. <laughs> and uh, I can remember, uh, you know, and if you blew it, there, you know, it was awful because there's no way to recover. You only had, it's eight o'clock, B-L-O-B-B, -B, it's eight o'clock, and you're off. Yeah. And with there's egg all over your face yeah. in, uh, in just seven seconds. Did you ever have the problem where, uh, I, this is how I started, by the way, the same job. Uh, uh, and, and I had trouble staying in the booth. And so I'd wander away and would be uh, talking with the engineers or somebody, and I'd, I'd miss it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, of course, they, uh, they were very subtle about letting management know that the announcer had uh, wandered off and could not be found. They had a PA system, and they just <laughs> said, booth announcer, please report to the booth. Please yes. report to the booth. They, well, there you go, right? Yes. Away. Uh, he won't be here too long. <laughs> uh, it's nasty. Na I don't think that much of that is done too much anymore. I know here in New York they have it, but uh, other places it's sort of... Uh, you mean we have to wait for the whole hour? Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. I'm just grateful that I, uh, I learned a lot, though. I actually grew up uh, with the Today Show as the, as the fellow in a booth in South Bend, Indiana, waiting to give the break uh, yeah. after J. Fred Muggs and all of the uh, stars of the Today Show. Now, Phil, the show started, as I recall, in Dayton. That's right. Uh, which is a, an amazing feat to think that you can, you can do a show out of Dayton and, and uh, gain national success. I mean, not, not a lot of shows start in Dayton, do they? Well, we had awful time, really. We people say, "Yeah, the soapbox derby," and we'd say, "No, that's Akron. Now, don't go to Akron." <laughs> uh, we had to beg people to do the yeah. show. A lot of people would do our show in the early days just to get rid of us, uh, because we really would pester. Uh, and we also discovered that uh, because stars were not on call for us, we had to improvise and feature shows that uh, that spoke to issues about sure. which the audience cared, yeah. and that actually served us very well. It's what's really been the backbone of our show. So then you moved to Chicago. Now, why are you coming to New York? Well, uh, for several reasons. One, uh, I, it gets us off the airplane. Marlo and I have a commuter marriage, which is not to be recommended to anyone. Mm -hmm. uh, we've both seen LaGuardia and O'Hare enough for several lifetimes. Now, this, this means that uh, you I maintain a residence in Chicago. Yeah. She maintains a residence. Right. In, yeah. And I get to now actually leave work and uh, go home just like a regular person and live here every week, uh, all week, without getting on an airplane. That's a big, big yeah. uh, change in my life. 
Beyond that, uh, there's a certain amount of creative uh, energy that's, you know, it's like when you start your show, there's, you're a little scared and nervous and everybody works harder. Uh, we found that when we moved to Chicago mm -hmm. 10 years ago, we got scared. What if they don't like us? And I think uh, as hard as you try, and we have, we're very proud of the fact that we think we've stayed on top of it and stayed hungry. Uh, this new move for everybody in the office renews the creative juices, and I think that the show will reflect it. And uh, hey, we you... also get to deliver the show sooner. In other words, we will use satellites okay. here so that we don't have, right now, we have some markets uh, that are five weeks late, and you know it's hard it's to do topical. To we have Lindbergh Landing in uh, one of our <laughs> shows, uh, this week. Uh, what, do you know what studio you're going to be in here? We're in, uh, I think, 8G. Yeah. You're on the sixth floor. We're on the sixth floor. Now, can we come up and bother you from time to time? Uh, by all means, I hope you do. I'm just looking here and see. I think your studio is bigger than ours. Now, wait a minute here. Uh, well, uh, now, I know Paul wanted to know, are you going to have a band with the show here? Uh, <laughs> Not unless uh, the, we have a ratings problem. And uh, <laughs> as you know, uh, there's a lot of uh, pressure on you when, well, you wouldn't know. You've never had a, you've never been in a situation <laughs> where everybody starts to pr produce your show when the ratings get soft. And that certainly has happened to us on more than one occasion throughout the 17-year history of our show. And one of the first recommendations they make is a band. So I, if anything, I, I assume everything's okay with you and David. <laughs> Oh, yeah, we're fine, but I was thinking we could just stay up right through the night and then come in and hit your show, you That's know. Good. That's good. It's a good morning. <laughs> and then go to sleep after that. Now, you get, uh, uh, you, you'll find, of course, here we get terrific audiences, and you get great audiences in Chicago, but you put your audiences to work, don't you? Well, that's right. As, uh, well, there is no Donahue show without the studio audience. Uh, that's probably one of the biggest reasons why we get away without having a band. Uh, when the woman, uh, really, when the woman in the fifth row stands up and says how she feels, that's our show. And we feel it, w the best shows are the ones in which a community develops between the guests, sure. the audience, and myself. But do they do homework? Do they know oh, the no. issue before they come no. in? No, we try to, no, you get a ticket with a date stamped on it. And so we don't allow a guest to choose, uh, uh, an audience member to choose a, gu yeah. a guest yeah. or a show. Otherwise, you know, you'd have them down the, around the block for the big stars, and then you wouldn't have anybody sure. to work with for the issues, yeah. which is really what makes us go. D who, who really has annoyed you in the past 18 years? <laughs> I mean, guests on the oh, show. Me. Uh, oh, I, you know, I hate to name names because oh, it might have been on. my fault. Well, uh, I tell you, a guest you've had, uh, a guest who says, first of all, you ask a six minute question and the guest says, uh huh. Yeah, yeah. That's sweaty. I mean, you just. But we need names here. Now, uh, <laughs> what about. Uh, I remember, Phil, a long time ago, Abby Hoffman. A long time ago. Yes. I think this was still in Dayton. Uh, it was possible. Uh, are you going to say he called? He called me Merv for the whole show. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, uh, you know, I I really uh, for a week I was depressed, and uh, he uh, he he's to this day apologized. In fact, he was on the show just a couple weeks ago and said, "You know, I'm really sorry." Is that right? Yeah. Well, he and might... it wasn't a, he wasn't being nasty. He just you know, here's a guy who wasn't sure who he was for a long time. Yeah. He was, uh, <laughs> Uh, no, you got this. You got the sense that he was goofing, but doing it with um, maybe just a little less a little, mean spiritedness. But bite? I don't yeah. know. Um, I don't know. It's possible. I, I don't think so. Abby and uh, I, well, I'll tell you who uh, Jerry Rubin is. One is a show that we drag out. Uh, you know, uh, Johnny has the axe handle with yeah. uh, with Ed Ames, and that's my show. He just tore me up. This was 1970. You know, with the that's headband. who I was thinking of was Jerry Rubin. Yeah. He said that you were outside selling drugs to the kids. He and said so that, and, so and uh, you know, here I am in Dayton, Ohio, uh, where we we were getting lots of angry mail because yeah. we had Madeline Rio here and other right. unpopular people on the program. People thought the world was going to hell, and we were leading it there. And here comes Jerry Mo Rubin with the tie dye T-shirt, and and I'm saying, uh, uh, he says, you say ah a lot. Do you have an anal problem? You know, that was. Uh, <laughs> You know, and we were only two or three minutes into that. This was a live uh, television program. I'll yeah. never forget. Now, I, we were talking about you this afternoon, and it came up that uh, for, I believe, it was your 15th anniversary on the air, mm -hmm. uh, and I hope this doesn't embarrass you, you took your entire staff to Paris? Well, we went to France. We did 10 days in France. We had... Uh... <laughs> I, I took the kids to Blimpies last uh, year. <laughs> uh, well, we never thought we'd make it to 15 years. Uh, really, uh, as you mentioned, uh, Dayton, Ohio was not uh, the hotbed of uh, television uh, programming at the time. And, and also, we did break a lot of rules. We had no desk, no couch. And, and uh, 
we were making people angry. We were, the sponsors were canceling, and we really didn't, we weren't sure at all what kind of future we had. So when we made it to 15, and the show has done well, and uh, a couple of bucks for the company store, why, yeah. I said, let's, you know, do you love me, let's go, and uh, forgive me for all the insecurities over the years. And we did have a wonderful time. We had balloon rides. We were, we did a barge uh, for three days. We did a chateau for three days and stayed at the Creon in Paris for three days. Good heavens. Now, when we say the staff, what are we talking about? You and a secretary? Uh, <laughs> well, uh, it was a little larger than that. Of course, uh, everybody brought spouses and or uh -huh. friends. Um, and it, uh, there were 47 people on the trip. This is a very impressive thing. Yeah, we had two buses. And, uh, of course, I was a nervous wreck. I just, you know, like Father Time walking around. Looking at the weather and wondering if everything. Yeah, I was. Uh, well, sure, the pressure is on you, boy. It's your party. Well, there. after yeah, for all this, right, yeah. fooling around, I thought uh, this better be good, and it was. It was everybody yeah. had a good time. That's terrific. It's a very classy thing to do, and it's a very classy show, boy. You showed me plenty last week with that that deal with that guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, Mr. Donahue and all of your staff coming. Yeah, actually, we uh, we have about two thirds of uh, our coming. One third uh, for family and other reasons. Yeah. Uh, this is, uh, as you know, moving to New it's York. A big deal. I assume you've probably by now found a place to live. Right? <laughs> uh, got, a, got a car we rent that we yes. keep on the streets. <laughs> uh, all right, December 3rd, I guess you'll be in the building, and the new shows will start. First show airing. will be Jan 7, yes. Oh, good. Uh, but we do get here in December, right. and uh, we're all excited about the skating rink and Rockefeller yeah. Plaza at Christmas. We're very fortunate. Well, we're, we're very excited about the prospect of having uh, such terrific neighbors in the building. And listen, I'm not kidding you. Uh, this has been a. Uh, people don't believe me when I say I had nothing to do with this. It's been a publicist dream. I cannot tell you how, what a, to, to plug into your audience, if we don't make it here, kid, it ain't going to be your fault. I thank you very, very much for what you've well, done. Well, you, you're doing us a favor by showing up. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll be right back, folks.